Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, San Antonio police say a man is shot in the face on the city's east side overnight. We have details on his condition coming up. The FDA has authorized Pfizer's third booster shot for many Americans. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, who will be among the first to get the shot? And what a beautiful morning taking a look outside with live cam. We're at 61 degrees, very pleasant. Almost a collective sigh from all of South Texas this morning, the first full day of fall. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 23rd. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's very pleasant to wake up and, you know, it's not so humid. Oh, it's always nice when you can lop off about 10 degrees from temperatures we've seen around here lately. Mike's here with more on this very good news for a Thursday morning. It's yeah, fantastic news. And uh, it's always fun to say you might need to grab a light jacket in parts of the hill country. I was going to say, I've been waiting. Yep. We have been waiting for you to say something like that. Now it's finally here. We were talking about it, how temperatures would be down in the 50s here in town and maybe even 40s in the hill country. And well, there's an airplane coming in. I could watch that all morning long. Anyway, <laughs> 48 Bernie stage, Balverde, 49, 46 right now in comfort, 49 Bandera. That's just wonderful. We're still holding at uh, 63, but as you can see, some of the uh, areas in and around town are down in the 50s already and will continue to drop down. We still have this very, very dry air out there and dry air clear skies. That's the difference between this morning and yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, we still had a few clouds left over. We had the, the wind, which kept things kind of stirred up a little bit, but there's not much of a breeze. So that's allowing the heavier, cooler air to settle down here to the, uh, the surface this morning. And uh, we do have a lot of mold, ragweed, fall, elm, pigweed, and grass are on the low side throughout the rest of today another just sensational day 80 at noon 87 for a high temperature ah oh, just enjoy it get out and take a deep breath this morning same thing tomorrow most of the weekend as well we'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority when steven's here this early in the morning something's going on what's up yeah usually when i'm in this early mike there's some trouble on the roads and right now this seems to be the case here off us 90 at 36 uh taking a wider look or closer look at trans guide you can see that we have some first responders out there along with several road flares and you can see from that flashing light there the sea world exit is closed off and that is because a crash has been detected in in that area. A few vehicles are moving along nice and smoothly there. However, that exit is closed as they work to clear that thing. But bringing you to the map that is there in the westbound lanes right at State Highway 151. And again, be be aware that the SeaWorld exit is closed right now. It's unclear how long this is going to be there, but we will be tracking that throughout the morning. See how that does impact that morning drive. We still have some work convoys out there of I-35 northbound and McCullough Avenue. I actually spotted some of these as I was driving into work this morning. Uh, these should be wrapping up hopefully here in the next few moments. Moments, but taking a wider look at our map, it is still pretty green on the screen. So that's some good news. And if you are traveling in from Highway 90, those eastbound lanes are still really good right now. 19 minutes from Castroville at this hour to San Antonio. A little time from Lytle with 17 minutes on 35 and just 29 minutes coming in from Pleasanton on 37. But the big thing that we're going to be tracking throughout the morning is here. This crash again. This is a trans guide camera at US 90 at 36. However, that crash is located off State Highway 151. The SeaWorld exit is still closed. We're going to be watching that pretty close. Closely. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. New this morning, a man shot the face and rushed to a hospital. San Antonio police said a man was at a gas station near I-10 and East Houston Street around 10 o'clock last night when someone opened fire. The man drove to a house about three miles away to Bernadine Street and called 911. Police say he was shot in the jaw and is expected to be okay. He was able to talk to police and give them some information. Right now, officers are still searching for a possible suspect. Now onto the coronavirus and the decision regarding booster shots. The FDA is authorizing Pfizer's third shot for senior citizens and other high-risk groups. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Food and Drug Administration approving Pfizer's booster shot for seniors and high-risk American adults. Though the CDC will likely come out with specific guidance this week, FDA Acting Commissioner Janet Woodcock giving an example of who the agency has in mind for the shot. When it comes to high-risk, the list includes health care workers, teachers, child daycare staff, grocery workers, and people in homeless shelters, among others. Hopefully, Director Walensky will come out on Friday and give those final recommendations about who is at high risk and who exactly should be getting these booster shots, including those above the age of 65. For everyone else, we just need more data. People need to wait. Americans who received Moderna or Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine will also have to wait a few more weeks for approval from the federal government. Dr. Fauci hypothesizing what he believes but to be the, the inevitable. The day, I believe the correct regimen 
is going to be two doses at first and a few months later, a third dose. For J&J, it'll be the first dose followed a few months later by the second dose. Two million Americans with compromised immune systems have already been cleared for Pfizer's booster shot. Allison Rogers has Crohn's disease. If you've already gotten the second one, um, the third one is kind of a breeze. I got it on a Saturday and by Monday I was back at work. Hospitals are being pushed to the brink. In Iowa, the head of the largest hospital in the state says staff are burnt out. And in Wisconsin, ICU beds are nearly full with the virus yet to reach its peak. Still, the shots are working. Our medical team has found that states with the lowest vaccination levels have death rates nearly four times higher than in states leading the country in vaccinations. We have a degree of vaccine hesitancy in this country that's really quite disturbing. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky is expected to lay out the full guidelines for Pfizer's booster shot by the end of the week. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. The surge of Haitian migrants at the border with the U.S. and Mexico causing the Biden administration to look for some help with housing. The administration apparently looking for a contractor staff the Guantanamo Bay migrant facility in Cuba. Request calls for at least 50 unarmed custody officers who could deploy within 24 hours. 10% of these workers must be fluent in Spanish and Haitian Creole. According to the listing, the Migrant Operations Center has a capacity of 120 people, but says it would have an estimated daily population of only 20. But also says that number could exceed 120 migrants and possibly reach 400 in a quote unquote surge event. President Joe Biden is pushing fellow Democrats to get work done soon on his Build Back Better agenda. Biden and congressional Democrats are trying to bridge party divisions that threaten his big proposals. In hours of back to back meetings at the White House yesterday, Biden told them to come up with a framework and top line budget figure they can live with soon. Even next week, the House is is set to vote soon on the first part of Biden's plan. A nearly one trillion dollar public works package that vote Monday now serves as a deadline. And happening today, it's the Big Give. It's a chance for you to help out your favorite organization in town. From now until midnight, you can visit thebiggivesa.org and make a donation to any of the worthy participating nonprofit organizations. And we are told that, oh, it looks like there's a lot of donations already pouring in. You still have a lot of time, so make sure to get your gift in before midnight. 437, about 61 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to show you how to make sure your child is properly secured in their car seat. And next, lots of football happening uh, today, including the Houston Texans and even some high school football action this evening. We have a preview. And taking a look outside with the live cam, it's the weather we've been waiting for. We're in the 60s here downtown, but even in the 50s in the hill country. So you might want to grab a sweater if you live out there. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Welcome back, 440 in morning sports. When the Texans face the Panthers tonight at Energy Stadium, Davis Mills will make his first NFL start. That's after the Houston Texans made the former Stanford quarterback their first pick in the third round. Now due to injury to Tyrod Taylor that can keep him out for at least four weeks. Mills is now the Texas signal caller. Star offensive lineman Titus Howard's already impressed with the rookie and his pocket presence. When he sits back in the pocket, he's already tall, so he can see everything, and he just delivers. There's one thing I can say about it. He's not scared to take a hit when he's throwing the ball, and you can you can tell, I think last week, the guy came free. He took the hit, but, you know, he a quarterback. A lot of quarterbacks can't take a hit like that and just get right back up. He got right back up, came back down in that drive and scored a touchdown. So that just speaks a lot of a volume to what type of player he is. Kickoff tonight set for 7.20 p.m. Stephanie Cernas, Texas Longhorns open play in the Big 12 this Saturday when they face the undefeated Texas Tech Red Raiders. Orange haven't won a Big 12 title since back in 09 when Mac Brown led his team the national championship game. Longhorns have given up 367 yards so far this season with 184 on the ground. Orange are seven and a half point favorites when they kick off at 11 a.m. at Royal Memorial Stadium on Saturday. You see that game live right here on KSAT and ABC. The UTSA Roadrunners will be looking for their first 4 0 start since 2012 when they travel to Memphis to take on the undefeated Tigers. Going into this game where the stats are fairly even, UTSA averages almost 40 points a game while the Tigers are about 43. 
in the passing department. About the same in the rushing department. Tigers are better on the ground. That's where UTSA's defense will be truly tested. Kickoff in Memphis is set for 2.30 p.m. and it will be a nationally televised game on ESPNU. Don't forget our KSAT 12 Me TV Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week tonight. Number three, Smithson Valley against number nine, New Braunfels in the Battle of the Unbeatens in District 27-6A. Kickoff on KSAT 12's Digital Point 2 station set for 7 p.m. tonight, live from Unicorn Stadium up in the beautiful city of New Braunfels. And that's a look at morning sports. I like how you say Stephanie's Longhorns. They, well, they are, right? <laughs> I mean, you're part of Yes, it. yes. Well, I'm, not, I'm not playing, though, on Saturday. You have a vested interest. Yes, yes. a lot. <laughs> Time now, 443 and about 61 degrees. Is your child secured properly in your vehicle? Many parents think they are, but they're not. Coming up next, we're going to show you how to double check your kid's car seat. It's Child Passenger Safety Week, and car crashes are the leading cause of death in children ages 1 to 13. While most families use car seats, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says a majority are not installed properly. Myra Arthur explains how to keep kids safe in the car. It's the first line of defense in a car crash, but car seats aren't always easy to install. Each car seat is different and there's different ways to fasten it properly. In the emergency department at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Dr. Angela Costa has seen firsthand the dangers of children not being properly restrained. When you think of things that like, wow, if we had just done this, the outcome would be totally different. It's frustrating. It's sad. Infants and toddlers should be buckled in a rear facing car seat with a harness in the back seat until they reach the maximum weight or height limit of their car seat. The straps should be at or below the child's shoulders and the harness should be snug. A certified child passenger safety technician can help properly install the seat and many can be found at police and fire stations. As the child grows, forward facing seats with a harness should be used. Those straps should be at or above the shoulders. Put the seat at the correct angle. The manual will help you determine that. Then it's on to booster seats. Always use a lap and shoulder belt to properly secure it. The belt should sit low and snug across the hip bones and away from the child's neck, crossing the middle of their chest and shoulder. Accidents do happen, so being as safe as possible before the accident occurs really makes a difference. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. 447, we're going to talk about this glorious weather with Mike in just a moment. But right now there's a crash on the road, so let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Now, this is something that drivers are going to want to be very cautious of, especially if they're heading out there in the next few moments. Uh, you can see from this shot at Transguy that we do have plenty of flashing lights out there, some road flares, obviously indicating a crash has occurred out there. But the thing is with this crash that SeaWorld exit is currently closed. You can see from that flashing light right there that we're seeing uh, many first responders are working to clear this up. Right now we do know that some vehicles are able to still make it on 90 with no issues right now. But if you plan on exiting that uh, SeaWorld exit, make sure that you plan accordingly and find those alternative routes this morning because it's unclear how long they're going to be here this morning. Uh, but bringing you to the map that's there off US 90, those westbound lanes at State Highway 151. As we just mentioned a little bit earlier in the newscast, those eastbound lanes, if you're traveling into San Antonio from perhaps Castroville, you're not going to face any problems, at least at this hour. Those westbound lanes are what's being affected. Uh, do have some progress, though, here. Those work convoys we told you about a little bit earlier have since cleared out. That was off I-35 northbound at McCullough Avenue. Uh, you know, I, I saw those coming into work earlier this morning, but right now, aside from that crash, it's still pretty good right now on our map. As you can see that there's not a whole lot of issues occurring right now on the roads with the exception again of that crash off US 90 at State Highway 151. Of course, we're going to be tracking that closely and see how that does impact the morning drive. Guys, thank you, Steve and Mike. Have you ever heard the phrase bluebird skies? I believe I have. Yeah, yes. and, and I typically Perfect. tend to see it in the fall and this was, yeah. is, is very fallish to me. I mean, the intensity of the blue skies, mm -hmm. there were some great high wispy clouds around yesterday as well. As you can see, there's just a couple of them in this picture. But when you have the really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere like this and yeah, it just really doesn't get any better than that. And it is starting off absolutely wonderful this morning. Looking off there to the west, obviously the moon has already set. We are at 48 degrees Bernie stage, 46 now Kerrville and Comfort. Yes, I did check 
Believe it or not, the wind chill map, there's not enough breeze out there to give us any wind chill. But when you get below 50, you can, the formula is kind of come into play. But there is nothing as far as the wind chill out there. It's just kind of, it's nice and crisp and cool. And 53 in Helota, 63 still at the airport and Stinson. We will drop down a little bit going on into, did you want to take my picture? I was going to show the morning lows up in the hill country. Look at you. No. <laughs> in the Not middle it. of a live newscast. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> anyway, uh, humidity, of course, yesterday, remember the dew points had dropped down about 30 to 35 degrees from the previous day, and it's even drier in some areas this morning, and that's one of the reasons because drier doesn't hold the heat in quite as well, and we've got the clear skies and light wind as well, as opposed to yesterday we had those windy conditions, and the humidity is going to be staying very low throughout the rest of today, the rest of tomorrow, but notice how now we're still below 60, so that's that's the magic number. That's the threshold. But the uh, humidity or excuse me, the wind flow is going to be coming in here more out of the southeast and that's going to start. It'll be a slow process, but especially by the end of the weekend, that's going to bring in more moisture around here and it's going to be more humid by later on Sunday, but that'll set the stage hopefully for some rain. There's the water vapor imagery in the upstairs areas of the atmosphere, mid and upper levels, and that's why with that dark shade on there, why I've got such dry air and such beautiful blue skies out there. And here's what the satellite picture shows once again. Nothing. A couple of uh, low clouds down there to the south. And boy, oh boy, there's just, I mean, other than the Great Lakes, and this is the actual low right here, which pulled the front on through. That's the front draped down uh, along the eastern seaboard. But uh, there's just nothing upstream for us. So more beautiful weather is in store for the next uh, really three, four, five days just about. But then by next week, we do keep your fingers crossed, have some rain chances. 80 at noon, plenty of sunshine out there. And 87 for a high temperature today. Nothing but sunshine, low humidity, roll down. The, it was nice to drive with the windows down yesterday. By the way, it is an ozone action day around the uh, metropolitan area. So if you can, uh, you know, put off filling the tank, something like that, that would help out. Temperatures tomorrow will be down in the 50s once again, low 60s over the weekend and getting up into the upper 80s. So we'll still see about a 30 degree swing in temperatures over the next few days, and that's a good indication of dry air. And then uh, rain chance moves in here by the first of next week. Probably a better chance Tuesday, Wednesday. And you said 40s in the Hill Country. Yep, mid 40s right now. Wow. Wait, yeah. that's an abrupt shift, isn't it? It's like it went from <laughs> scorching hot to <laughs> this morning. Again, grab a jacket. Yeah. It's always fun to say. Yeah, kind of is. 452, about 61 degrees. And coming up next, a new poll shows what music act fans are most excited to see in concert as tours ramp up again. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, nine, six, Fireball two. Your daily four number, seven, one, nine, eight, Fireball seven. Cash five, eight, 10, 23, 24, 26. Lotto Texas, one, 11, 17, 22, 28, 41. And your Powerball numbers, 20, 40, 47, 55, 63, Powerball 5, Power Play 3. Good luck. Hollywood is remembering Melvin Van Peebles and the boss is celebrating a big birthday. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. He was known as the godfather of black cinema. Melvin Van Peebles has died. From his films including Watermelon Man to Broadway shows Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death, which is returning to the stage next year. Van Peebles influenced everyone from Spike Lee to John Singleton. And of course, his actor-director son, Mario. Melvin Van Peebles was 89. So let's get started. What's in Antony Porofsky's pantry? The Queer Eye star and chef is out with a new cookbook that aims to help you make quick and delicious dinners. And he tells me if you always stock a few simple things, you can make a lot of tasty meals. Um, I love my chickpeas, my cannellini or my butter beans. I keep all kinds of like pastas and grains and things like that. Um, it's a weird one, but like anchovies in a jar. Again, if you buy them in a can, you got to eat them all right away. And I don't know about you, but I do not want 36 fillets of anchovies. His book, Let's Do Dinner, is out now, and a new season of Queer Eye is coming, though we don't know when. It's a sign of the times. Harry Styles is the music act fans are most excited to see in concert. That according to ticket sales on StubHub, as massive tours ramp up again this fall. Luke Combs is second, The Rolling Stones in third. And it's a boss birthday today, Bruce Springsteen turning 72, while George from Seinfeld, Jason Alexander, is 62. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Yeah, was it Harry Styles in San Antonio earlier this month? Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I heard he put on a heck of a show. Yeah. I think most people were just excited to be back in a live venue seeing a live act. And just to see him, yeah, see him live, but it was also, I think it was sold out. Mm -hmm, I yeah. believe you're right. Wow.
Okay, 457 on your Thursday morning, about 61 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, authorities are still searching for the person of interest in the case of Gabby Petito. Why police are not calling her boyfriend a murder suspect. And don't worry about carrying around a purse or backpack. There's now a robot that will follow you around and carry your stuff for you. We have details coming up in Tech Bites. That's interesting. Okay, the new Academy Museum of Motion Pictures opening up in LA next week. Ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to have a first look at the historic new museum venue. And if you have to leave at the top of the hour, be advised we have a major exit closed right now with a ton of flares out there. 90 36th Street area, I believe this vicinity of 151. But uh, we'll get all the details from our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos, coming up after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a massive search continues in Southern Florida for Brian Laundrie, the boyfriend of Gabby Petito, the 22-year-old woman whose body was discovered this past weekend. Back here at home, if you are waiting for temperatures around 60 degrees in the mornings, we are there and subtract about 20 from that for a part of the Texas Hill Country. We'll take a look at those morning lows so far. Coming up with Mike Ostridge. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 23rd. Thanks for joining us today. Fall is officially here. I guess it happened at 2.21 p.m. yesterday, but this morning we're really feeling it. Oh, we are. It's really nice out there. Mike, again, you you actually took the time to look to see if there were wind chills this morning in parts of our viewing area, just for grins. Why not? Yeah. Right. And when you get, because when temperatures get below 50, that's when all those, you know, wind chill formulas and everything and the, and the graphics start showing wind chill, but there's not. And that's one of the reasons why we have cooled down this morning so low is because we don't have the wind like we had yesterday. Yesterday, and we've got a lot more clear skies. Remember, we had some of those clouds hanging around here yesterday morning. So 61 degrees. We've dropped down a couple of notches since last hour here at the airport. The dew point, that bottom number, still 42. That's very dry and, again, a very light breeze out there. We are going to make it up to 87 degrees, so it's almost going to be about a 30 degree. We'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches this morning and about a 30 degree rise in temperatures, which is always a good indication that you got some really dry air in place, obviously, with that low humidity. Humidity. The aquifer dropped down again, two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading, and the allergens, a lot of mold, ragweed, fall elm, pigweed, and grass are on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in, uh, well, few hours, about uh, 7, 7.30 or so. Once again, look at those temperatures out there. We're just going to show this all morning long. 46 Bernie stage, 46 in comfort, Kerrville. Just kind of savor it, you know? You can just kind of smell the pumpkin spice out there this morning or just nice fall air is great because you can walk outside and just or don't cough though when you <laughs> smell it though mark uh that was not not good sound effects for this uh, when i was trying to get across there anyway clear and cool this morning and we're going to have sunny fantastic upper 80s later on today so we'll be about at a normal high temperature <clears throat> now it's contagious there and nice uh, throughout the rest of the week and the weekend. Nice mornings, nice and pleasant. Upper 50s, low 60s, and then great afternoons. Now, we will start to see a bit more humidity coming into the picture by later on Sunday, and that's going to set the stage, hopefully, for some rain chances coming in here next week. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, got some problems to talk about, right? Yeah, just off to another busy start, Mike. Uh, much like yesterday, we did have a pretty busy morning, and right now it seems to be the case here off US 90 at 36 uh, taking a look here at trans guide. We've been showing you this shot for the last half hour here on GMSA. We still have first responders who are working to clear a crash scene. And as we take a look there, you do see that those road flares have the sea world exit blocked off and we do have plenty of flashing lights, obviously indicating a very heavy first responder presence, but it is still early enough to where traffic on US 90 is not too bad. Just make sure you move over that extra lane. Give them plenty of room to get that scene cleared, but taking you to the map that is right there along US 90 in those westbound lanes at State Highway 151. Uh, again, the SeaWorld exit is closed at this time, but if you are traveling into San Antonio from those eastbound lanes, it's still pretty good right now. You're not going to encounter that crash and it's not going to cause too many issues for you. But uh, it, later today, just something to be aware of. There's going to be some street lighting happening there on US 90 at Nogalitos. The eastbound and northbound main lanes from the Callahan Road to Nogalitos will be closed. Uh, that is said to be going on during the morning, but to three in the afternoon, but it should be wrapping up later today. But that's why we're keeping an eye on US 90. 
90, making sure that that crash does not impact any of those tech stock crews that are working to improve the roadways. But right now, those inbound times are still looking pretty green across the board despite that crash there. You can see here it's 28 minutes coming in from 37 in Floydesville, 22 minutes coming in from 87 in Laverdia, and 29 minutes coming in from Seguin. Still pretty green on I-10. Uh, but we would want to get, take one last look here at Transguide. US 90 at 36 is the big problem spot at this hour. Again, it's not clear how long these first responders will be out there, but make sure you move over and slow down. Give them plenty of room to make the road safer. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, San Antonio police need your help identifying a person of interest in connection with an aggravated robbery. This happened back on August 29th at a store located off of Far Fair Meadows. That's not far from Somerset Road and I-35. Anyone with any information on the case, they're asked to contact the San Antonio Police Department's robbery unit. Governor Greg Abbott is adding more items to the third special session agenda. He announced that property tax relief and a constitutional amendment addressing bail changes will be on the agenda. As for bail resolutions, it has failed in the previous sessions this year. It requires a two thirds vote from both chambers before it can be placed on the ballot. The proposal would allow courts to deny any type of bail for defendants accused of violent or sexual crimes. Other items on the agenda include redistricting, regulating transgender student athletes, and whether the COVID vaccine should be mandated. 506 right now, now to the Gabby Petito case, and a new witness claiming she saw Petito just before her disappearance, not far from where her body was found. Meanwhile, the search for Petito's fiance resumes today. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning, a new witness in the Gabby Petito case coming forward, claiming she saw a huge blowout between Petito and her fiance, Brian Laundry just before Petito's disappearance. Nina Angelo says the couple had an explosive argument at a restaurant in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. She describes Laundry's body language as aggressive, arguing with Petito and restaurant staff. She was standing on the sidewalk crying and he walked back in and was like screaming at the hostess and then walked back out and then he walked back in like four more times to talk to the manager. The restaurant confirming on Instagram that Petito and Laundry were there, adding they notified the FBI. Yeah, we were sitting directly next to them. Vividly, I remember telling him, this guy is freaking me out. His demeanor, the way he was acting, um, how persistent he was, uh, it, he fr he freaked me out. The restaurant is just outside Grand Teton National Park, where agents found Petito's body. Laundry's whereabouts remain a mystery. Authorities are searching for him in this nature preserve in Northport, Florida, not far from his family's home. Laundry remains a person of interest in Petito's disappearance. Police are not calling him a murder suspect. That just means they want to find him, right? The minute that arrest warrant comes down, then anyone who harbors him. Anyone who helps him evade justice, etc. Now they're committing a crime. This case is captivating communities across the country. People gathered for this vigil last night in Salt Lake City, one of the last places Petito was seen alive. Being in my 20s myself, it kind of really touched me in a way that, I mean, she was a woman. She was a possibly a victim of domestic violence. It's just something that felt close to home. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And here at home, the labor shortage is affecting VIA, and that's caused VIA staff to propose changing the frequency of some bus routes. For high demand routes, VIA says these temporary changes would mean a longer wait time of two to five minutes. For low demand routes, you're looking at up to 30 minutes. The VIA Board of Trustees must approve those changes. A meeting is scheduled for next Tuesday. VIA says their goal is to maintain quality service with the staff they have available. However, the transit agency is hiring, offering $20.25 per hour with benefits. You can find details on the proposed changes and available jobs right now on our website at kset.com. Hey, South Texas happening today. It's the Big Give. It's our chance to help out your favorite organizations in town. From now till midnight, you can visit thebiggivesa.org and make a donation to any of the worthy participating nonprofits. Uh, right now, look at the top of your screen. That's a live ticker, folks, from Big Give website. They already have over a million dollars in donations. There's still lots of time. Let's get that uh, amount even higher. Make sure to get your gift in before midnight tonight. There's still time. Time now is 509 and about 60 degrees out there. Still ahead, Microsoft showing off an all new computer, the Surface Laptop Studio. 
And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at a nice, pleasant 60 degrees. Enjoy this weather. And you know, today we're only getting up to the 80s. What a treat. We'll be right back. 512, welcome back. The risk of COVID in teenagers is higher now than it was at this time last year. And as Ursula Perry tells us, in addition to viruses like the flu and RSV, some cases of COVID-19 are alarming doctors with complications they were not expecting. UT Health San Antonio pediatric doctors are seeing the type of complications of COVID-19 that could go either way. Older teens uh, coming in with severe clotting in their lungs, you know, that were very frightening to definitely the families and to the, to the patients as well. These are teens that have no comorbidities, meaning they have no complications prior to contracting the virus, yet come close to death anyway. We had uh, a, a very active teenager also in football, and, you know, he had gotten a blood clot and uh, in his lungs, and he was very close. We were really quite worried about him. But he made it. Uh, I think. Yeah, but thankfully he made it. Some here have not been as lucky, although Dr. Wu does not have the numbers of deaths in these younger patients. He says once this complication shows up, massive care must be taken. Those patients, you know, all require oxygen, require uh, oxygen, you know, uh, delivery, and then they need anticoagulation or blood thinning of the blood to um, ha wait for the body to absorb that clot or may not make the clot even larger. There's one other complication that doctors are seeing here in San Antonio. It's called neuropathy, where the child appears to be confused, but there's no other outward symptoms, and they are positive on their COVID test. It's alarming, and parents definitely need to keep their eye out for that. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 514, and we're at a pleasant 60 degrees. Really nice out there. Up next on GMSA, we'll tell you about this new cargo-carrying robot that will follow you around like your favorite dog. Welcome to Allstate. A place where everyone lives life well protected. Even when things go a bit wrong, we got your back. Here, things work the way you wish they would, and better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click or call for a lower auto rate today. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Insure with 27 vitamins and minerals. Now introducing Insure Complete with 30 grams of protein. It's time to forget your worries and escape to a place where the water is warm, the people are even warmer, and there are a thousand worry-free moments waiting to unfold. Call 1-800-SANDALS. In today's Tech Bytes, Microsoft's new laptop. The Surface Laptop Studio is the most powerful yet of Microsoft's Surface series. It features a screen that flips into tablet mode that settles flat right on the keyboard. It starts at about $1,600. YouTube is testing a feature that allows you to download videos. For now, it's available only to premium users. They can click on a download button that saves the video to their offline library, not to their hard drive, so it's a lot like downloading Netflix movies to watch on a plane. And finally, a rolling robot that carries your stuff for you. The robot is a smaller version of the original larger design. Its maker says it carries up to 20 pounds for more than 20 miles. The robot will be available in the U.S. October 15th. Price tag, $1,800. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Seriously, Mike? What? Seriously? We have to tell you. Yeah, so we're showing about the, the, the robot uh, that follows you around and carries your stuff for you. Yeah. Mike says? <laughs> Isn't that called a husband? Isn't that called a husband? No, Here, hold Mike. no. Mm -hmm. we, we carry mm -hmm. your stuff, too. I didn't say, I agree with you. I'm not saying, but, I mean, here, hold my, you well, know. Notice he's staying sometimes. off camera. The hold this. my purse type thing. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mosterhage at ksat.com. Yeah. All right, <laughs> 518 right now. <laughs> Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, uh, you know Mark, you were holding his coffee cup this week. <gasps> well, so. that's true. That's right. I so am his robot he's a, dog. He's a gentleman, and he's a, he's a great colleague at that, too. So we'll call it that, right? What can I do for you, Stephen? That's all right. I, I think uh, I, I'm still earning my keep here. So uh, I bought you lunch recently. It, oh, he did? Yeah. Great how five bucks goes really far with Stephen. 
<laughs> now, er, now, now everybody's like, where's my lunch, Mark? Yeah. Okay. I'm we'll going, get to that I'm hopefully soon. But uh, right now, the big topic this morning on the roadways is going to be this crash here off US 90 at 36. As we take a closer look, uh, we do have several flashing lights out there. Still plenty of road flares indicating that we do have a closer there out the SeaWorld exit. Uh, it's very difficult to make out where this crash actually happened. In fact, one of our directors, Don, said he came across this crash while coming into work this morning. But if you're driving by this or if this is in your route this morning, make sure you move over slow down. You can see a few of these vehicles are making their way past it pretty easily. But as we know, the morning starts to get as the morning starts to get going. That's when we see more people out there again. Use some caution out there, but taking you to the map that is right there in those westbound lanes of US 90 at State Highway 51. And again, that SeaWorld exit is closed. We're seeing a little bit of a build up there, though, in those westbound lanes of State Highway 151. So something to be cautious of and some construction that should be wrapping up here. Hopefully momentarily is off I 35 southbound at FM 1103 uh, throughout the week. We've been seeing a minor buildup in those southbound lanes, but it's going on from 10 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Two lanes are still currently blocked, but that should be wrapping up by Saturday, September 25th. Uh, but taking a wider look at the map, it is still green on our screen, so that's still good news if you're heading out to grab that PSL later this morning. Uh, but right now, this crash could be a factor if you're driving through US 90 here in those westbound lanes. As always, use caution. We're going to continue to monitor this crash closely, guys. And if PSL is foreign to you, it's these, those pumpkin spice yes. lattes. Yes. Oh, okay. That sounds great PSLs. this morning. Yes, we've yeah. been talking just, about uh, it. Just helping you out, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what? So anyway, thank you very much for the uh, translation there. You're welcome. Yeah. Beautiful view, and look at the blue skies back there. Great shot of the Tower of the Americas. That's just a gorgeous picture. Thank you very much for that one, Nelda. Appreciate the uh, KSAC Connect shot. And uh, we've got a great start this morning. Lots of clear skies. Should be a fantastic sunrise. And, yep, it is chilly out there. I love showing this. It has dropped down in Kerrville and Comfort now at 45 degrees in both, lo I know, both locations. 46 Bernie Stage, 50 at Balverde, and we're at 61 out there at the airport. Look at that. Port SA is 52 and uh, 53 up the road in Lotus. So we'll continue to drop down a couple of more degrees degrees in the next few hours and high temperatures yesterday made it up to 87. The average in town is 88, so right where we should be. No triple digits on this map, which is nice to see, and that's pretty much going to be the, the case again today. We're going to have temperatures that are going to be right around mid uh, kind of upper ish 80s. Low humidity, absolutely fantastic, and the humidity stays low for the next few days all the way through most of the weekend. The uh, well, this line on here is a little kind of iffy. It, we are going to see the humidity kind of jump up a little bit. That uh, needs to redraw itself right there, but more humidity going into the first part of the week. We actually later on Sunday. That, though, is going to set the stage for uh, a couple of showers and even a few thunderstorms to uh, kind of start to move on in here with another feature that's going to be sliding on in. Here's what it looks like on the big picture right now. There's nothing out there. Big low around the Great Lakes. That's what actually pulled that front on through here, and uh, we just got nothing now. There is a low which is going to try and develop out here to the kind of southwest of us, which hopefully will slide on in here and give us that chance for some rain. It may actually keep a rain chance sticking around throughout a chunk of next week. 80 today at noon, sunny skies, just an absolutely glorious day. Roll down the windows again today, 87, high temperature, plenty of sunshine, low humidity. Great if you got a football game tonight, fantastic. By the way, it is an ozone action day today around the metropolitan area. Tomorrow night for football is also going to be just spectacular. Plenty of sunshine going into the weekend as well. We'll start off in the low 60s and notice how those low, low temperatures start to creep up a little bit. A bit more humidity, especially going into next week and then hopefully some rain chances by next week. And if you see a brunette blur later on this evening, it's probably Steph running a 5K in this great weather this evening. <laughs> yes, it's perfect nice, running right? weather. And, you know, some of our neighbors are out too, um, you know, people that we don't talk to all the time and they're like, it's great out here. It's yeah. great. Everybody's smiling. Uh, everybody's oh, in yeah. a great mood right now. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Fantastic. Have a good run. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. Very much. Have a nice day. 523, <laughs> about 60 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, it's Britney Spears versus her family in a new documentary. Plus, Will Smith is turning summertime into a movie. Today in entertainment news, we've got Britney Spears, The Fresh Prince, and Fantastic Beasts. CNN's David Daniel rounds it all up in our Hollywood Minute.
Brittany's never had one person she could trust. Not mom, not dad. Brittany had a fear that her family would barge in and take everything. What was going on inside the conservatorship? Here's your first look at Britney versus Spears, the latest documentary about the pop star's long battle to end her conservatorship. The film debuts next Tuesday on Netflix. What do you have to say for yourself, Dumbledore? We have a title and a new release date for the follow-up to Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Warner Brothers says the third film in the Harry Potter prequel series, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, will open April 15th, 2022, three months earlier than previously announced. She turned around to see what you beeping at. It's like the summer's a natural aphrodisiac. Summertime, the Grammy-winning summer anthem from DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince is headed to the big screen. Deadline reports, Will Smith is set to produce a hip-hop movie musical for Screen Gems based on the 30-year-old single. No word on the plot or whether the Fresh Prince himself or DJ Jazzy Jeff will appear on screen. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 528. We're now down to 60 degrees at San Antonio International. Still ahead on GMSA, people 65 and over could be getting COVID boosters soon. However, health experts say there's another vaccine people of all ages should consider. Plus, it's been red hot for a long time. Now the housing market is cooling off a little. We'll tell you what the median home price is now. You'll see a drop in demand anytime soon. And moving into a new home can be overwhelming, especially if it's the first one. Just ahead on GMSA at 6, Max Massey shows us some of the things you need to do when you move into your new home. Well, many are focused on getting a COVID booster. Health experts stressing another vaccine as we head into the fall season. And it is officially here. It is officially fall and it feels like it. We are at 60 degrees in the downtown area, feeling very nice out there. I can't remember the last time our morning temperatures were hovering around here. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. That is September 23rd. Thanks for joining us. And when you step outside, you, it'll almost put you in a good mood, just the weather itself. Well, if you're driving out I-10 towards the Texas Hill Country this morning, you may have to kick the heater on in your car, <laughs> believe it or not. Probably light jacket for the kids uh, this morning because we got temperatures out there in the 40s. It is gorgeous out there and uh, right now out at the airport 61 degrees. Dew point stands at 42, which means we got some very, very dry air around here. No clouds and light wind. That's the difference between this morning and yesterday morning, and that's why we are much cooler and it's going to continue to cool off for the next uh, couple of hours. And yeah, go out Kerrville 45 degrees Fredericksburg at 45 57 right now in Rock Springs. We do have a lot of mold, ragweed and fall elm out there. Pigweed and grass are on the low side. The updated pollen count is going to be coming out in a, a couple of hours or so. 80 at noon, 87 high temperature. Absolutely fantastic. Low humidity all day long. Next couple of days and going through the weekend is going to be nice as well. Hopefully some rain chances by next week, maybe first of next week and going in toward the middle of it. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavasso, still that big problem on the west side? We got a good update here, Mike. That crash looks like it has since cleared out. So if you are heading through that direction, we do have some residual road flares there to talk about just right there, but those should be off in about 30 minutes. It looks like we did have another first responder that was just leaving that scene, but thankfully it looks like that exit has since reopened. So that gives us time to talk about what we're seeing around town. I-10 at Frio, just a few folks out there. 35 at Evans getting a little bit busier in some of these shots. We know a lot more folks are going to be heading out there in the next few moments. Here's a shot from 35 at AT&T Parkway. Other places look a little lonely. Some, but obviously you're going to want to be careful when you're heading out the door this morning because that crash was uh, causing some big delays. Well, causing an exit to be closed there off the SeaWorld uh, exit. And it, again, that was on those westbound lanes of US 90 at State Highway 151. Thankfully, it was still very early on where we weren't seeing any big delays uh, right now. But you're going to want to be, again, very careful if you're heading out the door in the next few moments because right now it's still pretty green. And that's what we'd like to see, especially on a day like this when you want to probably grab that cup of coffee and get your morning started a little bit earlier. As you can see from these inbound times you're not going to face any problems at least at this hour it's still 25 minutes coming in from 35 in new brunfels coming in from 281 it's 25 minutes as well from boverde and i10 that is 25 from bernie so let's go ahead and take one last look here at trans guy 281 at san pedro just a few folks out there this morning but we're inching closer to 6 a.m so we'll be watching things closely mark stephanie Thank you, Stephen. Some people could soon be getting a COVID-19 booster shot. However, health experts say there's another vaccine people of all ages should consider, the flu shot.
CNN's Rick Conway has the latest on boosters and the news of flu fears. One dose, a second dose, and soon, for some, a third dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Pfizer's booster just got the FDA's emergency use authorization, and today, a CDC panel will decide whether to recommend it. Then the CDC director signs off. The booster is targeted at people 65 and up, those at risk of severe disease, and people at risk because of their jobs, like healthcare workers, teachers, and grocery workers. The CDC is expected to fine tune recommendations on how boosters should be given and talk about where we go from here. I suspect what's going to happen is we'll continue to collect data on this cohort, 65 and over, and other people who are made eligible. And eventually the agency may walk down the authorization to younger age cohorts. But there are still millions who haven't gotten their first shot. In the U.S. right now, on average, more than 2,000 people are dying from COVID-19 every day. And we're closing in on another threat, flu season, which kills about 12,000 up to 50,000 Americans every year. The American College of Emergency Physicians says there are early signs that the coming flu season could be severe. And with so many hospitals struggling already, health experts are recommending flu vaccines just in case. But it's better to be prepared. And I think this is the part where humility really is a very important part of our science approach. I'm Britt Conway reporting. New studies found that the antiviral drug remdesivir significantly reduces the risk of hospitalization among high-risk COVID-19 patients. The drug was tested on nearly 600 people. Half received the drug, the other half received a placebo. The group that got the drug saw an 87% reduction in risk of hospitalization by day 28 and an 81% reduced risk of dying compared to the group that got the placebo. It's approved for treatment of hospitalized adult and pediatric patients ages 12 and older and has emergency use authorization for treatment of younger children. It is approved for only use in a hospital or healthcare setting. A self-portrait by Frida Kahlo will set a new auction record for a Latin American artist's work. It's called Diego y Yo, which translates to Diego and I. The Mexican painter is known for her self-portraits, often depicting her iconic unibrow. This one features her husband and fellow artist Diego Rivera. Sotheby's Austin House believes this work will sell for more than $30 million when it goes up for auction this November. A piece by Kahlo's husband set the previous record for a Latin American artist's work. That sold for about $20 million less. 537, you're not going to believe this, but it's now dropped to 59 here at San Antonio International, out of San Antonio International. Very nice. Still ahead, we're going to show you new numbers that show that the housing market may be cooling off a bit. Why you can expect to pay high prices for a new home. And next, top things you need to know right now to make sure your roof is in tip-top shape. And taking a look outside with live cam, you see 59 out there. Wow, that is a very nice start to your day. Very cool and even almost cold in the hill country. We're in the 40s there. We'll be right back. Welcome back 540 on your Thursday morning. The roof is something that people tend to take for granted in their homes, but maintaining and repairing it is the key to keeping your home and your family safe. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, Max Massey takes a look at roofing repairs and what to do to make sure your roof is in good shape. The roof is a critical part of the home, but it's hard to reach and it is expensive to replace. Regular roof maintenance can really elongate the lifetime of your roof, which is a very expensive part of your home. Checking for damage and fixing simple problems up front can help prevent costly repairs in the future. For example, a couple missing shingles may not seem like such a big deal today, but over time it can cause major damage to your home and could be expensive to fix. Regularly clean your gutters and inspect them and remove any ice dams. If left alone, backed up gutters and ice dams can cause damage to the roof and can actually flood your home. Consider trimming back trees that are dropping a lot of leaves or branches on your roof or in your gutters. If you start to find ice dams more frequently, consider installing a heating cable to prevent them throughout the colder months. In addition to inspecting and cleaning gutters, try to clean the full roof regularly and clear off any debris as it falls. Also, check in your attic or interior ceiling for any signs of water damage. These stains likely mean there's a hole or leak in your roof that may need repair. Have your roof inspected by a pro and repair any damage that may be letting water into your home. 
You should actually have your roof inspected by a pro every two to three years. Make sure there's no small damage that needs repair before they lead to bigger issues. It's also important to look at the attic ventilation. Without proper ventilation, summer heat can warp and decay your shingles, and cold winter weather can trap moisture in the attic. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 541, 59 degrees. And coming up next, looking for a new pet? Well, we have a friend standing by that wants to go home with you. Well, if you were looking for a cuddly little addition to the family, Kim has the perfect one for you. Who's that, yes, baby? This is tomato. So tomato is a little bit of a chihuahua mix, uh, just a couple months old, very sweet and cuddly, likes to lay in blankets, really likes to kind of lay on the couch. Oh, yeah, um, and, and kind of at that little phase where it just needs yeah. to be held, a, doesn't so, know what's going on. Exactly, really, yeah. So. yeah, likes to be held, pet. Um, all of those good things. Just to want to cuddle up with you. Yeah, but ju at just a couple of months old, then there's yes. going to be a lot of play in that dog. Lots so. of play, lots of, you know, running around, making sure that you've got a lot of chew toys so um, they can get a lot of good exercise too. And be a good walking companion yes. too. Yes. Plus the kids in the backyard, tennis ball. As I always say, everybody <laughs> sleeps then. Yes, so. everybody can play. It's perfect. And what y'all got going on? So we just want to say thank you so much to everybody that donated and contributed for the Hurricane Ida relief. It has helped so, so many of our pets, and we couldn't do it without the gracious support from the community. So, thank you. A lot. You brought in, what, about 100? Over 160 animals. Wow. Pets, yeah. Cats, mm -hmm. dogs, and we have a lot of people came through and donated um, you know, dog food, cat food, everything. So, it is, it's helping so many of our, our pets. So, if you would like to uh, donate or yes. if you'd like to adopt, they have plenty of puppies and kittens out there. Just head on over Fredericksburg Road just outside uh, Loop 410 and the number to call is 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And in your morning consumer headlines, the U.S. housing market's hot streak appears to be easing. Home sales in August fell 2% from this July, and according to the National Association of Realtors, that's down 1.5% from July 2020, and it ends a two-month run of increases. Home purchases have been surging for about a year, thanks in part to low interest rates for buyers. While sales might be starting too slow, cost is still moving upward. The median home price last month was nearly $357,000, and that's about a 15% hike from the previous year. Home prices have been going up for nine and a half years. A legal fight could keep a popular video game off most iPhones and iPads for the foreseeable future. Apple says it will not bring Fortnite back onto its devices until the legal fight with Epic Games is resolved. A court battle between Apple and Epic has been raging for a few months now. Tensions began last year when Apple booted Fortnite from the App Store after it claims Epic disregarded the rules for in-app payments by allowing users a different way to make purchases. Earlier this month, a judge ruled that Apple cannot prevent app developers from giving users payment options. Epic Games' CEO says he will keep the pressure on Apple. And looking at the trans guide cameras, it looks like there's a situation at I-10 and Frio. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, just when you think things quiet down, something else pops up. And this crash is being reported here of I-10 at Frio. As just Steph just mentioned, as you can see right now, we do have plenty of flashing lights out there and traffic that is slowly building there off I-10. Again, that crash is causing some issues already this early in the morning. Although we're not seeing a lot of folks out there, we do see that some vehicles are trying to make their way around this crash. So you're going to want to be very careful. It's a pretty dark spot from this shot at Transguide from what we're looking at, but bringing it to the map uh, that is located on those eastbound lanes of I-10 right at Frio Street. Uh, it looks like we are starting to see a very minor buildup behind that icon there, so we're going to be watching this very closely, see how that does impact the morning drive, but the problems continue on I-10. We do have a stalled vehicle further up on those westbound lanes right at Days of Olla Road. Uh, thankfully, it's still very early on to where this stall is not causing any issues, so that's some good news, but of course, as always, check those vehicles. Make sure it's working properly before you get on the highways because the last thing you're going to want to have is an issue out there, especially this early in the morning. And when there's an issue like this going on, you're going to want to be sure you're very careful. We're going to be watching this crash closely, but it's been a pretty busy morning so far, guys. Yeah, it has. Yes, it's unusual. It has. Yeah. You've been busy and it's just beautiful. It almost looks like a painting. Yeah, it does. I mean, there's Mr. McClellan taking those pictures over there at Woodlawn Lake and love the uh, descriptor. Not only are temperatures great, but sunsets are beautiful as well. Had a few high clouds still hanging around here, but yeah, that's an absolutely gorgeous. That would make a beautiful painting 
on the wall over the couch. Thank you for that uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, sun's going to be coming up in about a uh, little less than two hours, about 720 now this time of year, 720, 725. Should be a great looking sunrise with a lot of clear skies. And these numbers are just fantastic. 53 Helotus, 46 Burning Stage, 45. That's the prize winner right now up in Comfort. It is, that's just, I mean, cold up there. Again, high temperatures yesterday, 87 degrees, just a notch or two below normal. Same thing today. Temperatures are going to be fantastic right where you would expect them. The average high and also low humidity, so it's going to be really comfortable on top of that. And dew point temperatures are going to be staying low today, tomorrow. Stay start to come up a little bit going into the weekend, but that's still going to be comfortable, not as dry air as right now. And then the humidity is going to start to shoot up by the first part of next week. And that, though, is going to help out with and hopefully get squeezed out with a little bit of rain. Satellite picture, nothing out there right now. Again, not much going on around the country. Big uh, low out there around the Great Lakes. That's the one that actually brought the front through here. This front that's draped right there along the eastern seaboard is the one that moved through. And that was uh, late on Tuesday night, just in time, obviously, for the uh, official start of fall yesterday. So here's computer model, long range model. Again, may have a, you know, a cloud or two here or there. We had some of those just wispy clouds around yesterday, but uh, just looking at a lot of sunshine today and tomorrow. Uh, a couple of clouds hanging around here on Saturday, Sunday. Sunday late in the day is when we start to see the humidity kind of come up a bit more. It'll start off very nice Sunday morning, but you'll see some more of that humidity by uh, Sunday afternoon and especially evening hours. Monday, and again, this is that broad brush computer model. Most of the rain is off to the east. We may have a couple of showers around here. There's the chance for it. And Tuesday, the same thing. Now, this model doesn't really paint in a whole lot of rain until we get into the middle part of the week, Wednesday going into Thursday. And this is because there's a low that's going to be sort of hanging around here. But I do still think we have at least the chance for some rain even on Monday, but slightly better chances as it looks right now going into the middle of next week. But again, that's still a week away. So, you know, Got to keep watching it. Things can change between now and then. 80 at noon, sunny skies. Absolutely gorgeous out there. And then high temperature today, we make it up to 87. Plenty of sunshine, again, low humidity, roll down the windows. The only kind of fly in the ointment is the fact it is an ozone action day today in the metropolitan area. 88 tomorrow, 89 Saturday, 92 on Sunday. Look at the low temperatures, though. They're still starting off in the low to mid 60s and still a 30 degree swing in temperatures. So that's a good indication that the humidity is going to be on the comfortable side over the weekend. And then low temperatures stay in the 70s by the middle of next week. More humidity. Hopefully it gets squeezed out in the form of rain. Very nice. And also on uh, race day, Saturday morning, forehead for the cure. It looks pretty good. That'll be great. That's perfect running weather, right? Yes. Okay. I think so. Very excited I'll, about that. I'll take it from the expert over there as far <laughs> as good running weather. Thank you, Mike. 552, about 59 degrees. And the smash hit Broadway musical Dear Evan Hansen and its Tony winning star are hitting the big screen this weekend in the film adaptation. We're going to have a special preview next. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the final decision on who will be first in line for boosters. It's all now in the CDC's hands after the FDA gave the green light overnight to booster shots for millions of at-risk Americans. We're gonna have the latest on that and so much more right here on GMA. Have you ever found forgotten in the middle of nowhere? I wish everything was different. I wish I was part of something that anything I said mattered. Ben Platt returns to the title role in Dear Evan Hansen. Six years after he first played the teen with social anxiety, Platt says he's learned from Evan. I think seeing how dire things get for him in the story and how much redemption he's able to have, it's really encouraged me in my own life to force myself off those cliffs and really experience those moments of pain or discomfort in the name of something deeper and more connected. Let that lonely feeling wash away maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay i didn't know that you were hurting when you see how complicated this period of life is i think for for adolescents and for parents as well for me it just felt like such a universal story um just about needing each other about connectivity when i read the script i cried throughout the entire thing <laughs> there are a lot of people who feel like us. Co-star Amanda Stenberg says she poured a lot of herself into her character. 
if it does have to do with like my own depression and anxiety and and being so anxious that you know I'm, I'm not going to be enough for other people if you knew who I am just how broken I am I already know you and I love you in Hollywood I'm David Daniel don't know if you've heard yet, but University Health has a low supply of blood right now. Our KSAC community partners are making an effort to try to help out. You can too. Right now, you can schedule a donation online at the uh, website universityhealthsystem.com. You can also make an appointment by calling 358-2812 during business hours. Platelets and type O are a priority, but all donations are welcome. More information, of course, is on our website at ksat.com. Glad you're with us this morning. Still ahead on GMSA, many of those who fall victim to suicide are our veterans. Still ahead, Jonathan Cotto tells us about a place where active military veterans and first responders can be around others who understand the burden of post-traumatic stress. The FDA has authorized Pfizer's third booster shot for many Americans. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, who will be among the first to get the shot? If you take the bus, there's uh, some changes coming on Via's routes. We will explain. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It is nice and pleasant out there, and we're looking forward to the sun later today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is September 23rd. And finally, Mother Nature and the calendar are in sync. Yes, we love that. Thanks for joining us this morning. You step outside and it's really pretty out there. We're hovering right around 60 degrees in town. But if you're just now waking up, uh, you can probably do the math. When we get a cooling trend like this, there's a huge cool down in places like the Texas Hill Country. Usually about a uh, rule of thumb, about 10 degrees or so. And in this case, it's even more than that. And yeah, hopefully you, the thermostat's on automatic because you had air conditioning a couple of days ago and you need some heat on in parts of the hill country and a light jacket as well. And we are going to continue to see these temperatures maybe even drop down a couple of more notches. So 49, we're at 57 right now here in town. So we dropped down four degrees just in the past hour. 45 comfort, 46 Bernie stage and 52 at Helotus. Yeah, a light jacket or sweatshirt is a pretty good idea for the kids if they are waiting at the bus this morning. Mold, ragweed, fall elm are on the high side. Pigweed and grass or low updated counts going to be coming out in uh, just a couple of uh, I'll say excuse me about an hour and a half I should say so uh, 57 that's what I had uh, gone with earlier this morning we may actually dip below that a little bit in the next couple of hours because we've got clear skies dry air and we'll continue to cool down up until about the time the sun comes up and then it's going to heat up fairly quickly and as a matter of fact we're going to be gaining 30 degrees throughout the course of the day 80 at noon and 87 for a high temperature today the average Normal high is uh, 88, so we're obviously going to be in that ballpark. But right now, we're about 10 degrees or more below normal. Just think, what was it, a couple days ago we hit 100? Yeah, big change out there. Great weather. How long will it last? Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso. So big accident earlier this morning. That's gone, right? Well, it looks like it, Mike. But a lot of the problems that we're spotting right now seem to be on I-10. Uh, take a look at this stalled vehicle right there on those eastbound lanes right at the Y, not too far from where that crash was detected a little, little bit earlier this morning. I've been keeping a track on all the monitors that we have right now on TransGuide, and I-10 does have a number of issues. But talking about that crash, it appears that it may have just cleared out there off those eastbound lanes of Frio Street of I-10 that is uh, right near Frio Street. Uh, however, we are still seeing that buildup in the eastbound lanes and keep in mind that stalled vehicle was not too far from there. Again, right reported at the Y, but further up on I-10, we do have that stalled vehicle that's still leading to at least one lane being blocked there in those westbound lanes right at Days of Zavala Road. And as we take a wider look at the map, the issues are still pretty minor. We're not spotting a whole lot. It looks like a stall just popped up towards Live Oak and 35, but right now those inbound times, the good news is it's so green across the board. If you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments, just a few minutes from 19 uh, Highway 90 on uh, Castroville, but we did have that crash reported there in those eastbound lanes that has since cleared out. It has been a very, very busy start on the roadways, and we're starting to see a few more of these stalls. Just be sure you check those vehicles before you hit the highways. Guys.
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man shot in the face and rushed to the hospital. San Antonio police say the man was at a gas station near I-10 in East Houston last night when someone opened fire there. The man drove to a house about three miles away on Vernon Dean Street and called 911. Police say he was shot in the jaw area and is expected to be okay. He was able to talk to police and give them information. They are now searching for that suspect. San Antonio police all you need your help identifying this person of interest. Take a look at your screen. This is in connection with an aggravated robbery that happened back on August 29th at a store located off of Fair Meadows. It's not from far from Somerset Road and I-35. Anyone with information is asked to contact SAPD's robbery unit at 210-207-7300. Governor Greg Abbott says property tax relief and a constitutional amendment addressing bail changes will be on the third special session agenda. As for bail resolutions, it has failed in previous sessions this year. It requires a two-thirds vote from both chambers before it can be placed on the ballot. The proposal would allow courts to deny any type of bail for defendants accused of violent or sexual crimes. Also on the agenda will be redistricting, regulating transgender student athletes, and whether the COVID vaccine should be mandated. Back here in San Antonio, labor shortage is affecting VIA Metropolitan Transit. That's caused VIA staff to propose changes to frequency on some bus routes. For high demand routes, VIA says these changes would mean a longer wait time of two to five minutes. For low demand routes, you're looking at up to 30 minutes. VIA Board of Trustees must approve all these changes. A meeting is scheduled for next Tuesday. VIA says their main goal is to maintain quality service and the staff they have available. But the transit agency is hiring, offering about $20 an hour with benefits. You can find details on proposed changes and available jobs on our website at ksat.com. 605 now onto the coronavirus and the crucial decision regarding those booster shots. The FDA authorizing Pfizer's third shot for senior citizens and other high risk groups providing another weapon against COVID. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. Health experts feel Pfizer's booster shot means more protection for the most vulnerable. This morning, the Food and Drug Administration authorizing Pfizer's booster shot for seniors and high-risk American adults. Though the CDC will likely come out with specific guidance this week, FDA Acting Commissioner Janet Woodcock giving an example of who the agency has in mind for the shot. When it comes to high risk, the list includes health care workers, teachers, child daycare staff, grocery workers, and people in homeless shelters, among others. Americans who received Moderna or Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine will also have to wait a few more weeks for approval from the federal government. Dr. Fauci hypothesizing what he believes to be the, the inevitable. The day, I believe the correct regimen is going to be two doses at first and a few months later, a third dose. For J&J, &J, it'll be the first dose followed a few months later by the second dose. Still, the shots are working. Our medical team has found that states with the lowest vaccination levels have death rates nearly four times higher than in states leading the country in vaccinations. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky is expected to lay out the full guidelines for Pfizer's booster shot by the end of the week. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. And if you still need to get your COVID-19 vaccine, there are some pop-up clinics happening today. One is at the Second Baptist Church at 3310 East Commerce Street. That's from 3 to 6 p.m. And there's one at the St. Thomas Episcopal Church Sanctuary, Sanctuary located at 1416 North Loop 1604 East. That's happening from 1 to 3 p.m. And there's a pop-up clinic at Nation's Cabin Tree located at 4600 West Highway 90. That's from 3 to 4. You can find all this information right now on KSAT.com. Well, it's time to open up those wallets and purses and help out if you can, folks. Today, the Big Give is now underway, and you're looking live at their website right now. They already have well over a million dollars in donations, but if you'd like to be a part of the Big Give, you could do so through midnight tonight. And time now is 6.07, and it's about 58 degrees out there. By the way, you go to TheBigGiveSA.org. YouTube testing a new feature for video downloads. We'll explain still ahead. A museum with a collection of more than 13 million artifacts from film history opening up next week. We're going to have a sneak peek. Outside with live cam, we are savoring truly fall weather, waiting for the sun to come up. But uh, Mike, what'd you say? The current's down to 57 here in town? 57. Nice. Very, very nice. We're loving it. We'll be right back. And welcome back.
Welcome back. It's about 611. From a long time coming to a dream come true, a decades long effort to open a state of the art museum dedicated to the art of filmmaking has finally come to fruition. Here's ABC's George Pinocchio with the details. It matters for Los Angeles to have this film museum. Tom Hanks, a trustee for the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, helped welcome the media and special guests today to a first look at the historic new museum venue. From the shark from Jaws to the slippers from Oz, the Academy Museum holds a collection of more than 13 million artifacts from film history dating back to 1927, all spaced out in the 300,000 square foot campus at Wilshire and Fairfax. If you were to read every bit of information that is fascinating and important and speaks to you and see every clip that is playing in all of these halls and galleries and take in every one of the artifacts and exhibits. It's going to take you three and a half days. Its two buildings feature exhibition spaces, a conservation studio, two movie theaters, plus special event spaces that put a big focus on education, not just looking at the past, but also the future. We wanted to build a diverse and inclusive museum, and I think the world is ready to have those discussions. So I'm actually grateful that we're opening in 2021. We look at the history of the Academy Awards, all of the celebratory and the dynamic moments of film history, but we also look at those moments of exclusion and misrepresentation because we want to help the next generation of filmmakers learn from that history and do things better in the future. Do we need a movie museum? Yeah, uh, because we need to celebrate everything that this town has brought to the world and everything art form has brought to the world in order to bring people together. George Pinocchio for ABC News. Right now it's 613. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I believe there's a stalled vehicle off I-10 at the Y. Yeah, you know, this is what we're trying to clarify with our friends over at TransGuide. That stalled vehicle here at I-10 at the Y is uh, definitely causing some sort of issues right now, but I uh, want to make a quick correction. We told you that a crash that occurred there off I-10 has since cleared out, and uh, because that stalled vehicle is so close to that, uh, it uh, does appear that this may have something to do with the traffic that we're seeing build up there. That crash looks like it is still out there again off I-10 at Frio Street. We have plenty of first responders still on the scene, and traffic, as you can see right now, is building, which is not a good sign uh, right Right now, especially this early in the morning, you can see in those eastbound lanes, we have some yellow starting to show on the map, which is obviously indicating that slowdown as you just saw on the uh, shot from TransGuide. But we're going to be watching this one pretty closely, working with our friends at TransGuide to let you know what's happening out there on I-10. But some good news, though, as I was just checking uh, that stall that we told you about that led to at least one lane closure there off those westbound lanes at Days of Allah has since cleared out. So that's some good news, but we're seeing other stalls popping up. This one here off I-35 northbound, a stalled vehicle at Evans. Road, so make sure you are checking those vehicles before you get on the highways. Uh, we've seen a few of them pop up on the map and then clear out. So obviously we're seeing that trending issue, but the biggest thing that we're going to be watching at least at this hour is going to be this crash uh, trying to work and find out exactly how that's going to be impacting the morning drive. But stay with us. We'll have more coming up throughout the show, guys. Thank you, Stephen. And depending on where you wait, I guess you might need a jacket if you're waiting for that school bus. Even in town, I think, I mean, for some people, you know, 50s are, are kind of cool. And then we've got 40s in the hill country right now. I'm going to show you that in just a second. And uh, I, I did bump my temperatures yesterday. I was thinking 55 this morning and the, the, then this morning, with my forecast, I was a little bit uh, hesitant there, but I went back down to 55 uh, because I think we'll continue to, to cool down a couple of more notches and then a huge warm up throughout the day. We gain 30 plus degrees. Good indication of some very, very dry air out there. And uh, another view of this beautiful picture from Mr. McClellan. But I want to go over to that one. And then we had a couple of uh, couple of high wispy clouds hanging around here yesterday. And I love that just X marks the spot right there. It's a great shot. Thank you very much for that. OK. We're not seeing any uh, indications of the sunrise yet. It's going to be about an hour plus until it starts to uh, come up, but maybe by well, the next half hour to start to see the glow of the uh, sunrise. So it is the coldest since April 24th. We got down to 56 degrees on the 25th. We we're at 58 and uh, we'll probably be even colder than that. So this is going to be the coldest since back on April 22nd when we got down to 53 degrees. Like I said, I'm forecasting 55 here in town right now. And again, we've got 40s out there. Bernie stage 46, 45 comfort, 46 in Tarpley. 
This is just great weather. This is wonderful. Yeah, open up the windows and uh, well, maybe not open up the windows this morning. Wait a little bit longer because it is pretty chilly out there. So jackets and sweatshirts are a good idea for the kids and then get stuff them in the backpack later on today. But the best part about it is and the reason why we are so cool this morning is the fact that yes, we do have the dry air that moved in uh, Tuesday and behind that front and then overnight. But yesterday morning we still had some clouds hanging around and we had the windy conditions which kept the atmosphere kind of stirred up. But now when you don't have any breeze out there, the heavier, cooler air gets to sink down here to the surface, and that's why we have got just great temperatures out there right now. Nothing is showing up on the satellite picture, maybe a couple of uh, high wispy clouds. And then again, I mean, just looking at uh, what's upstream for us, nothing. Big low. I mean, this is a classic looking fall type pattern here with that lower on the Great Lakes in the front associated with it. That's the same one that moved on through here. And temperatures around the country, it's a it's a decent air mass covering a good chunk of the country with the exception of the extremes there down around Florida and the desert Southwest. But I mean, you know, it's as cool here as it is even up around portions of the Great Lakes right now. So yeah, enjoy it. Uh, it's not going to last forever. Obviously, we will start to see some more humidity come back in here starting later on Sunday and then going into next week, but at least that is going to come with some rain chances. 80 today at noon, 87 high temperature, plenty of sunshine out there and is an ozone action day today. So if you can put off, fill up the tank, something like that would help out. And over the next few days, tomorrow is going to be another sensational day starting off nice and crisp and cool. Same thing Saturday, Sunday, still 64 pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to sit outside on the deck, you might need a you know, little blanket with coffee in the morning. So uh, and then the humidity will start to work its way back in here Sunday. So we're not going to be as cool in the mornings starting off next week, but some rain chances. I think the better chances are going to be toward the middle of the week. Well, considering what we just went through temperature wise, this all looks awesome. Yes. Yeah. Fabulous, especially I mean, just Monday we were you know, dealing know. with um, triple digits. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, you know, last weekend was just miserably hot, and this weekend's going to be great. So. And we get a reprieve on the electric bill. Oh, yes. Oh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 618, about 57 degrees. And next, details about a new rolling robot that carries your stuff for you. Get back to you again with SlimFast. Shed those newfound pounds. With our clinically proven plan, pick from advanced, keto, or original. Give us a week, take off the weight, and keep it off. Text back to me to 44123 to download the free app. Stanley Steamer cleans your whole home. All you gotta do is pick up the phone. It's not just carpet anymore. It's tile, wood, stone, really any floor. Call 1-800-STEAMER now. We'll clean your home and you'll say, wow. I recommend Nature Made Vitamins because I trust their quality. They were the first to be verified by USP, an independent organization that sets strict quality and purity standards. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. Within this hallowed bowl is the grain of all time. Heart healthy, no artificial flavors, and ready in minutes. It's epic apples and cinnamon by the spoonful. Quaker Oats, a super trusted superfood. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new twist in the trial of Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes. Former Secretary of Defense General James Mattis, better known by his nickname Mad Dog Mattis, taking the stand on Wednesday. In court, General Mattis testified that Holmes personally pricked his finger to demonstrate the technology and said she was aggressive about trying to work with the Department of Defense something that never came to be, even though she allegedly claimed it did. He has since distanced himself from Elizabeth Holmes, calling his involvement in Theranos a mistake during a 2019 interview on PBS. It was obviously that uh, not a mistake on my part to be part of it. So what's up next in the trial? And for Elizabeth Holmes, it's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Microsoft will be releasing a new laptop. The Surface Laptop Studio is the most powerful yet of the Microsoft Surface series, and it features a screen that flips into tablet mode that settles flat on top of the keyboard. It starts at about $1,600. 
And YouTube is testing a feature that allows you to download videos. For now, it's available only to premium users. They can click on the download button that saves a video to their offline library, not their hard drive. It's a lot like downloading Netflix movies to watch on the plane. And finally, a rolling robot that carries your stuff for you. The robot is a smaller version of the original larger design. Its maker says it carries up to 20 pounds for more than 20 miles. The robot will be available in the U.S. on October 15th. However, that price tag, $1,800. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Time for a look at morning sports when the Houston Texans face the Carolina Panthers tonight at NRG Stadium. Davis Mills will be making his first NFL start. It's after the Texans made the former Stanford quarterback the first round, first pick rather, in the third round. Due to Tyrod Taylor's injury that can keep him out for four weeks, Mills is now the Texas signal caller. Star offensive lineman Titus Howard's already impressed with the rookie and his pocket presence. Kickoff tonight set for 7:20. The Texas Longhorns open play at the Big 12 this Saturday when they face the undefeated Texas Tech Red Raiders. Horns haven't won a Big 12 title since back in 09 when head coach Mack Brown led his team to the national championship game. Longhorns have given up 367 yards so far this season with 184 on the ground. The Horns will be seven and a half point favorites when they kick off at 11 a.m. at Royal Memorial Stadium on Saturday. You can see that game live right here on KSAT 12. UTSA Roadrunners looking for their first 4-0 start since 2012 and they travel to Memphis to take on the undefeated Tigers going into this game. Where the stats are fairly even, UTSA averages almost 40 points a game while the Tigers are almost 43 a game. In the passing department about the same, but in rushing, the Tigers are better on the ground. And that's where UTSA's defense will be tested. I love being an underdog, so if it was 20, 3, 4, it doesn't really matter to me. I like being an underdog, so... It just it may give me a boost. A lot of people probably think it's like we ain't met nobody um, that was that good or it's a fluke, but you know, we we just gotta prove prove them wrong. Good luck, Roadrunners. Kick off in Memphis set for 2.30 in the afternoon. It'll be nationally televised on ESPN U. And don't forget our KSAT 12 Me TV Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week is tonight. Number three, Smithson Valley facing off against number nine, New Braunfels in the Battle of the Unbeatens in District 27-6A. Kickoff kick on KSAT 12's Digital Point 2 station set for 7 o'clock tonight, live from Unicorn Stadium up in New Braunfels. Busy football evening and weekend. That's right. Time now is 626 and it's about 57 degrees out there. And still ahead, we continue to follow the latest developments on the situation in Del Rio with some migrants being released in the U.S. We're going to explain. There's a new witness claiming she saw Gabby Petito just before disappearance, uh, not far from where her body was found. Next on GMSA, the latest on the investigation. And we'll be right back. September's National Suicide Prevention Month this morning. We'll be hearing from a U.S. Army veteran on how he turned his experiences in helping others. Outside with Live Cam, we've been waiting a long time for a return to very pleasant temperatures. As a matter of fact, the word of the day in some parts of our viewing area is burr. And a good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, September 23rd. Thanks for joining us this morning here. It's pretty pleasant outside, but you're right in the hill country. Look in the 40s. Now, Mike wasn't even kidding. You might need an extra blanket or a jacket yes. or sweatshirt this morning for the kids. I mean, literally, you do have to have a jacket and sweatshirt on them waiting at the uh, the bus and even for yourself, maybe a light jacket. Uh, you won't need it by this afternoon. It's going to be one of those where, you know, hopefully the kids remember to stuff their jacket in the backpack uh, because we're going to see a 30 degree rise in temperatures, basically, or in, in some cases, even more than that. And there's the glow of the morning sunrise. Uh, sun's going to be peeking over the horizon in about 50 minutes or so. And temperature out there at the airport again is at 57. Very, very dry air. We had dry air yesterday, but the big difference is we've got clear skies right now and also not much of a breeze. Remember yesterday was very windy and so that kept the, the air kind of stirred up a little bit more. It is down to 44 now in comfort. So it's continued to cool off. 46 Kerrville, Bernie stage 48 right now in Bulver and 54 port to say hello to here at 52 degrees. A lot of mold ragweed fall elm pigweed grass are on the low side and uh, 
Yeah, just fantastic. Clear, cool, or like we were saying, in some places even chilly or downright cold this morning. And sunny, fantastic, upper 80s later on today. More of the same tomorrow and through the weekend. Great mornings, not as cool in the mornings as we go on toward the weekend, but still really nice, really pleasant, beautiful afternoons. Late Sunday, we're going to start to see some more humidity to uh, work its way back in here. And then also some rain chances. Not great starting off, maybe one or two showers on Monday, but it uh, looks like better rain chances as we go into the middle part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, it was busy earlier. Is it still busy? Yeah, things have not calmed down here, Mike. In fact, I was just kind of walking out of the studio for, uh, for the last few minutes talking to our friends at Transguide. Uh, right now, this is going to be the big issue there off I-10 at Frio. If you can see, traffic is con just continues to build there because we do have a crash that's located near the Y. Right now, we do know that at least one lane is blocked. That's the right Right shoulder there, but uh, right now this is going to be a nightmare for anybody that's going to be traveling through that area this early in the morning, especially now that we're getting close to the morning rush. You can see in those eastbound lanes of I-10, we're starting to see that yellow build, which does indicate that traffic is starting to pick up there. Again, those are the eastbound lanes right at Frio Street. It is shaping up to be a busy morning. I was just talking with our friends at Transguide. Another crash popped up here. Looks like a possible rollover off WW White. We're going to be tracking that pretty closely, but right now these inbound times are all almost green across the board with the exception of Lavernia 87. We got 24 minutes right now to the downtown San Antonio area, so uh, it has been shaping up to be quite a busy morning despite the beautiful weather that we're having. But uh, just take uh, pack your patience with that cup of coffee this morning. We're going to be tracking the roads really closely. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Steve. And top stories this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find the person who fired shots, hitting a man at a gas station. That shooting happened late last night near I-10 and East Houston Street. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. And Katrina, do police have any sort of description of the shooter? Well, not as far as I know. It actually seems like they're starting at square one with this case. Well, the victim was shot in his face. He wasn't able to offer police much information about the shooter. He did tell officers he was at a gas station near I-10 in East Houston when this happened around 10 last night. But that is not where police found him. The victim, who's in his 30s, was able to drive a few miles away to a home to get help. He ended up in the 4900 block of Bernardine. Paramedics met him there and took him to a hospital. The police say that man should be okay, that the bullet actually hit him just in his jaw. Meanwhile, they are trying to get more information about the shooter. And right now, it seems as if they don't know where the shot came from, whether that shooter perhaps may have been in a car or on foot. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding a man who they say robbed a cell phone store on the city's south side. Happened on August 22nd at a Metro by T-Mobile store in the 2900 block of Goliad Road. Police say the man walked in the store, pointed an unknown object towards the employee behind the register and demanded money. After taking the cash, the suspect took off. If you have any information about this case, call Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. That's 210-224-STOP. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, a time to reflect on one of the leading causes of death here in the United States. Many of those who fall victim to suicide are our military veterans. Jonathan Cotto spoke with a U.S. Army veteran and joins us now live. And Jonathan, was he able to turn his struggle into a way to help others? Well, it was certainly a long journey for this U.S. Army veteran, but he says he was already in service to country and wanted to continue being of help to others. But this time around, looking out for his fellow warriors. Service to country and family tradition. It's what inspired Tom Spooner to enlist in the Army in 1990. 12 deployments adding up to 40 total months in combat. All of that time not only leading to physical injuries, but post-traumatic stress as well. By 2010, he was dealing with many of the symptoms, feeling disoriented, huge emotional mood swings, and what he describes as a lot of mental noise. In an effort of making that noise come to an end, Spooner says he found himself navigating down a suicidal road. For me, the thoughts were, uh, how do I get 
this noise to stop. He soon realized he needed help. Spooner credits family and friends for helping him navigate through his challenges, but he realizes asking for help is not always easy. His mission now helping fellow warriors dealing with PTSD, addiction, and dramatic brain injury. In 2016, Spooner co-founded Warrior's Heart, a place where active military veterans and first responders can be around others who understand the burden of post-traumatic stress. I mean, the power when you get the like-minded people shared experiences together to some degree, you know, uh, it's powerful. Whatever it takes, you know, wherever you're at in that scale, you know, uh, you know, engage in your life because uh, you're not alone. You're worth it. Uh, and choose life. If you or anyone you know needs help, the Warriors Heart Hotline is on your screen, 844-448-2567, answered by Warriors, for Warriors, 24 hours. Or you can visit warriorsheart.com for more information. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you so much, and I thank you for your service, sir. He's in the Navy for eight years. 6.37 right now on your Thursday morning. Now to the Gabby Petito case. At a new witness claiming she saw Petito just before her disappearance and not far from where her body was found. Meanwhile, the search for Petito's fiance, Brian Laundrie, resumes today. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning, a new witness in the Gabby Petito case coming forward, claiming she saw a huge blowout between Petito and her fiance, Brian Laundrie, just before Petito's disappearance. Nina Angelo says the couple had an explosive argument at a restaurant in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. She describes Laundrie's body language as aggressive, arguing with Petito and restaurant staff. She was standing on the sidewalk crying, and he walked back in and was like screaming at the hostess and then walked back out, and then he walked back in like four more times to talk to the manager. The restaurant confirming on Instagram that Petito and Laundry were there, adding they notified the FBI. Yeah, we were sitting directly next to them. Vividly, I remember telling him, this guy is freaking me out. His demeanor, the way he was acting, um, how persistent he was, uh, it, he fr he freaked me out. The restaurant is just outside Grand Teton National Park, where agents found Petito's body. Laundry's whereabouts remain a mystery. Authorities are searching for him in this nature preserve in Northport, Florida, not far from his family's home. Laundry remains a person of interest in Petito's disappearance. Police are not calling him a murder suspect. That just means they want to find him, right? The minute that arrest warrant comes down, then anyone who harbors him. Anyone who helps him evade justice, etc. Now they're committing a crime. This case is captivating communities across the country. People gathered for this vigil last night in Salt Lake City, one of the last places Petito was seen alive. Being in my 20s myself, it kind of really touched me in a way that, I mean, she was a woman. She was a possibly a victim of domestic violence. It's just something that felt close to home. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And while the coroner has ruled Petito's death a homicide, the exact cause of death could take weeks to determine. U.S. officials say many of the thousands of Haitian migrants camped down in Del Rio are being released into the United States with notices to appear in immigration court or to an immigration office. The releases come despite a massive effort to expel Haitians on flights under pandemic-related authority that denies migrants a chance to seek asylum. Customs and Border Protection has set up a field hospital for migrants waiting to be processed. The CPB says more than 1,000 migrants have received medical attention. A volcano on the Spanish island La Palma continues to spew lava and black smoke this morning. So far, the eruption has destroyed around 190 houses and forced the evacuation of 6,000 people. The rivers of lava are now moving toward the island's more populated coast and the Atlantic Ocean. Authorities say residents face danger in the coming days and weeks. Scientists say the lava flows could last for weeks or months. 640, about 57 degrees. The housing market has been very active for a while. Many people have been moving into their very first house. And next, some of the first things you should do as you get settled in. All right, coming up, Stephen's got details on a major incident working right now on 410. That's coming up. But first up this morning right now at 644, tons of people have been buying and moving into new homes this past year or so. And for many, it's the very first time. 
In this morning's Ask Angie segment, Max Massey shows us the first thing to do when you move into your new home. There's a lot to do before you move into your new home. And once you get the keys, there are some tips to make your house feel like home. Buying your first home is a big milestone and a large investment. If this is your first time, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed by what to do next. I'd start by booking a cleaner to do a deep clean before you move in. You'll also want to transfer utilities right away, as well as turn on your hot water heater and rekey locks. Find the circuit breaker and find your water and gas shutoff valve so you know where to go just in case of an emergency. Consider adding a security system, getting that set up from day one as well. A lot of people get anxious during their first night in a new home and a security system can help put you to ease. As soon as you have access to your new home, you'll want to stock your bathrooms. The last thing you want on move-in day is to be searching for toilet paper, soap, and towels. You'll also want to think about having some essentials on hand, like trash and recycling bins, cleaning supplies, and paper towels. This will make that first day all the more smooth. If you do plan to move into your house and sleep there week one, day one, make sure you have all your toiletries handy and make sure you have a bathroom liner in case you have a tub there. That way you don't flood the bathroom on day one. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And the Big Give is happening today, so you can give to one of your favorite organizations. Now is the time to do it. As you can see, there have been uh, over 4,000 donors right now and over a million dollars raised so far. But of course, you have until midnight, and that website is TheBigGiveSA.org. Let's go straight to Stephen for an update on a whole lot of flashing lights on part of Loop 410. Stephen, what's happening out there? Hey, Mark, unfortunately, this is not the only spot that we spotted those flashing lights. Our friends at Transguide giving us a closer look here. We can tell you that it looks like this was an 18 wheeler that overturned in this area. We do have several first responders out there on the scene. We're getting a wider scope, and in fact, we can see some uh, traffic patrol that is trying to direct traffic out there right now. But uh, as you can see from one of those lanes, it is starting to build there off Loop 410 northbound right at WW White. Traffic moving, but very slowly at just 16 miles per hour. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's not the only crash that we're tracking. This one here still reported off I-10 eastbound at Frio Street. It has been unfortunately one of those mornings of crashes, uh, but we're tracking it all and you can see that the map is starting to get a little bit too colorful for our liking, which obviously does indicate those slowdowns. But we're going to bring you one last look here at Loop 410 at WW White. We're going to be tracking this closely and before we toss to Mike here, uh, we do have that crash again that we just talked about over at I-10 at Frio traffic also building there. So be very careful this morning. Definitely. Thank you, Stephen. We you know, like always, that picture. Always count on Yvonne every once in a while. She said she was doing some outdoor uh, outside work and Bill C5 flies over. And as pilots call it, it was severe clear yesterday. Had a couple of wispy clouds out there and uh, good flying weather too. Lower humidity. Don't use as much runway for the pilots to take off. And of course, out there, all the, hide all the folks at the uh, 433rd. And when you need a jump seat filled, call me. Call Mark too. He hint, hint. Too. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Thank no. you. Okay. I was looking on longingly, <laughs> hoping. Anyway, gorgeous sunrise this morning, and yes, it is going to be fantastic flying weather today. 57 degrees out there at the airport, 46 Bernie Stage, 44 in comfort. I just love showing this map with 40s on it right now. And yeah, that's the coolest we have been here in town since way back in April. And I think we'll drop down a couple of more degrees before we're all said and done. And humidity, of course, is very, very low. That's the reason why I moved in behind that front that came through on Tuesday. It will start to creep up a little bit more going into tomorrow on the weekend, but still that that's nice, you know, upper 40s, 50s for dew point temperatures. That's pretty good. Then by late Sunday going into the first part of next week, we get above that threshold line of 60. So more humidity around here won't be as cool in the mornings, but hopefully that's going to be feeding some uh, showers and some thunderstorms by next week. Nothing going on for the next few days. Uh, then Monday we are going to have a lot more clouds, probably some more uh, Sunday night into Monday and the chance for some rain. Uh, this computer model is a little bit more generous as far as rain, about a 30% chance maybe on Monday, up that somewhat on Tuesday. Obviously, this is one of those broad brush computer models, so not raining everywhere constantly, but we will have uh, some better rain chances than going into the middle part of next week. It looks like there's going to be somewhat of a low sort of hanging around here, and that's going to help to enhance the rain chances, and it's one of those where there's nothing to really push it out of here very quickly, so it may stick around for a while, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing to get, you know, a couple of days of just some 
off and on showers here and there today. Just get outside and enjoy it. Do a little uh, airplane viewing if you'd like to. And uh, tonight's going to be a good night for some stargazing too. And only the moon's only a couple of days past full. It was full on Monday, so yeah, it's going to be a beautiful moon tonight. 87 degrees. I saw the moon this morning heading into work. It was gorgeous. Uh, plenty of sunshine then this afternoon. It is an ozone action day today. And then the next couple of days, gorgeous again tomorrow. Fantastic for you got a game tonight to go to tomorrow night as well. Nice over the weekend and then the humidity starts to come back in somewhat on Sunday. We do have those rain chances by next week. Rob, one of our directors, Robert, standing just off camera with a fleece vest on, but that's, <laughs> that's not, a, I just realized it's not extraordinary because it's always freezing in here, yeah, right? It's cold inside <laughs> as well. <laughs> Tis the season, Robert. Yeah. Right now we're at 650, about 57 degrees. You know your family's story. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, learn how to find out about your genealogy and your Hispanic roots in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're in the upper 50s, lower 60s in this area, and wow, in the 40s in the Hill Country. If you're there, grab a jacket. We'll be right back. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the final decision on who will be first in line for boosters. It's all now in the CDC's hands after the FDA gave the green light overnight to booster shots for millions of at-risk Americans. We're gonna have the latest on that and so much more right here on GMA. In the news you need to know before you go this morning, a man was shot in the face and rushed to an area hospital. San Antonio police say the man was at a gas station near I-10 and East Houston Street last night when someone opened fire man drove to a house about three miles away on Bernadine Street to call for help. Police say he was shot in the jaw area is expected to be OK. He was able to talk to officers and give police information and police are still searching for a suspect. Also, before you go, San Antonio police need your help identifying this person of interest in connection with an aggravated robbery. It happened back on August 29th at a store located off of Fair Meadows. That's not far from Somerset Road and I-35. Anyone with any information, they are asked to contact the San Antonio Police Department's robbery unit at 210-207-7300. We've got a big incident affecting main lanes on 410. Also looks like they're affecting part of the frontage road. Here's Stephen with the very latest. It has been a busy morning here uh, and on our roadways, Mark and Stephanie. As we take a look, this is Loop 410 at WW White. Our friends at Transguide providing us this shot. As you can see, we have multiple first responders out there. Traffic just continuing to build on those frontage road lanes of 410. What we can tell you is that there is an overturned AT wheeler out there that is causing some issues right now traffic moving in those northbound lanes right at WW White Road at just eight miles per hour. But the problems don't stop there. We do have that crash that we talked about earlier in the morning. I 10 eastbound at Frio Street causing some delays and unfortunately a third crash. They are reported off US 90 westbound at General Hudnall that just came in. It is shaping up to be a busy morning, but thankfully the weather's looking a lot better than our roadways, Mike. Oh yeah, it's fantastic out there. Uh, grab your sunglasses, grab a jacket this morning, especially in the Hill Country. It is going to be a spectacular sunrise when it peaks over the horizon in about oh, 25 minutes or so. Temperatures 44 still in comfort. We are now down to 56 degrees out there at the airport. 54 Port SA and uh, 48 up the road in Balverde. Nice big warm up throughout the day. We're going to be gaining about 30 degrees or even more than that in parts of the Hill Country up to 87. Plenty of low humidity. Uh, great the next couple of days going into the weekend. Pleasant mornings, beautiful afternoons, lots of sunshine, and uh, keep your fingers crossed for some rain chances. There will be more humidity next week, but hopefully it gets squeezed out in rain. All right, traffic updates coming up throughout Good Morning America. Enjoy the weather, though, and have a beautiful day. We'll see you back here at 9.